All right, let's go back to that picture that was there. <laughs> Earlier we were wondering what he was hiding under that hair. <laughs> this is what he looked like before he came to Shimana. This is what he looks like now. <laughs> Earlier when, when, when Bob was talking about that pretty woman that you were with in heaven, and before that he was talking about that really ugly woman that was with John, I thought he was talking about you, but I guess he was talking about some ugly woman, but no problem there, buddy. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, we are having some fun with, with Glenn, and uh, he's a really good sport, and we, we had to be good sports. Later on, we'll show him what we really think of him when you all leave. Um, but no, seriously, it was, a, it was a great honor to be able to do that, and I um, uh, have a, enough people that were willing to come up and, and, and come up with jokes, true or false, about our buddy and um, somebody that we care a lot about. Um, and it's great that Glenn was willing to do that because I'm not willing to sit in that chair. Uh, I know Rabbi Lord's not going to sit in that chair. <laughs> so I think that's you, Bob. <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, all right, we have a taker. All right. Anyways, um, you know, while we all had great fun tonight, it's a special reason that we do this. And, um, you know, while Glenn likes to give out the humor and he receives it quite well, it's really what he wants to come up and talk to you about next that is really why we come here. Um, because we care about the Lord and what all he gives us and what he asked us to do and what this Shalom ministry actually does for that. So now you can come again, Glenn. Attention all black folks.
It's important that each one of us take care of whatever business it is in our lives. We have an appointment. You know, when I take a ride on my bike, see, this is so cool, I get to talk about motorcycles and nobody can hawk me about it tonight. Every time I preach at Shema, they know somewhere or other in the sermon, I'm going to do a motorcycling analogy or something. Oh, and here it comes. Well, tonight I got carte blanche. This may sound weird to you, but those of you who ride will understand. Before I take off, I want my driveway clear. I don't want any leaves. I don't want any debris. I want my garage clean. I want the driveway clean. I want to ride out on this immaculate driveway. Why? Because it's special. I don't do this. get to do this all the time. So I want it when I take it special. So that driveway is, is clear. And I tell you this because um, if there's things in your life, debris, or unfinished business, you're not going to really enjoy the things that stand better before you until you deal with these things. Whatever it is, I'm not going to throw out any examples. Just take it to heart. If you have unfinished business with the Lord, get that business handled. Whatever it is. No debris on the driveway. No unfinished business. No tasks left undone so that you can enjoy completely what he has for you. There, I'm done preaching. But I would like to talk to you about supporting this wonderful ministry, Shalom Ministry. Uh, we have a lot of fun doing this. Um, some of us would do it again. Some of us. <laughs> but the reason I allowed myself to uh, subject myself to what passes for humor <laughs> late on a Saturday night is because I believe in this ministry. I believe that Shalom Ministry is doing something not only that needs to be done, but doing it in a way that no one else, not only in this country, but in the world, was doing this. A ministry not only of bringing the gospel to Jewish people, but equipping African Americans to do that very work. Amen. And when we consider the shared history that we have, and the fact that there is so much opportunity, um, I feel so strongly about this ministry. Now, Dad will probably, my dad will probably remember this, but um, it was many years after my grandpa had passed away. And I was now a believer in Yeshua. And I was back home in Los Angeles and reinvestigating the Jewish roots of my faith. And Dad tells me, hey, you know, Grandpa had a box of books that you're welcome to look through. And maybe there's some things you'll... Do you remember that, Dad? Pull down this box from in the garage with books in it. He said, why don't you look and see if there's something from Grandpa's library that you might... Want to have. There wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot of stuff in the box. But you know what I did find in that box, and it surprised the daylights out of me. And I, I don't know if you even knew it was in there. There were two things in that box of my grandpa's books. One was a pocket New Testament. One of those pocket New Testaments where the Old Testament prophecies are highlighted. Where did my grandpa, who was an Orthodox Jew, get this pocket New Testament? And there was also a King James Bible. In, in his, and there wasn't a lot of books in there. And yet, in among those books, were, there was this complete Bible in this pocket New Testament. Inside the, in the, the cover, it was a hardcover pocket New Testament. Inside the cover, it had the name of a radio station in Los Angeles and the call call letters and the, and the dial number. And it had the, the name of a program that broadcast every week on such and such a night.
trying to figure out where on earth did my grandfather get the pocket New Testament in, in this King James Bible. I don't know, Dad, if you do. Do you know where he got it? Yes. Do you want an answer? Yeah. <clears throat> he was interested in how other people felt about religion. In fact, when I was a kid, at least once a month he would take me to a different church so that I would understand that I had to respect what other people felt about their religion, and he also said that they had to respect my opinion about how I felt about religion. So we spent a lot of time in churches when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and he always said, I never know enough, and he always wanted to know more. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, there, and so there in his books is a, a pocket New Testament and a King James Bible. Now, I have a theory and that's all it is, is a theory about where he got those. We had a lady when I was a boy um, who used to come and help clean our house. Mary, remember Mary Smith? And later during my grandfather's convalescence, she worked for him and helped him and took care of him. You know, I didn't know a lot about Mary. I'm a little kid, I'm in my own world. But she was an exceptionally kind and gentle woman. I mean, she, Without saying anything, she made a profound impact, just in her quiet, kind way. And I'm thinking that perhaps, just perhaps, it was Mary, during the time where, when she was ministering to my grandfather, shared with him these scriptures. And perhaps he would have felt much freer to accept them from her. She was somebody who showed kindness. She's somebody who lived her faith. And for the most part, Jewish people today do not want to hear about Yeshua from people like me. And I get that. I get that. Um, because unfortunately, for the most part to this day, people like Rabbi Lauren and me and some of you who are Jewish believers in Jesus are considered by the Jewish community to be traitors, to have left. Well, none of us particularly wanted to leave. Most of us would say that we were essentially shown the door, that the first time we tried to talk about this openly, the door was shut. But the fact is that Jewish people today are much more amenable to hearing about Yeshua from non-Jewish people, from people that they might meet at work, in the neighborhood. Um, and, and Shalom Ministry is equipping people to bring the gospel to Jewish people. And Jewish people, and to bring it in a way that Jewish people are able to receive. And I feel that it is, and there's nothing like this anywhere in the world today. There's not another ministry, anything like Shalom Ministry, in the world today. That's why I believe it is so important that this ministry grow and continue. And it needs our support to do that. And I'm not ashamed to ask you to write a check tonight, to give a donation to Shalom Ministry. Because there's a lot of people out there talking about loving Israel and loving the Jewish people and not saying a word about the gospel. Just doing nice things or saying nice things or holding awards banquets. <coughs> right? My people need the gospel, not more affirmation. We need the message of eternal life. That's what my people need. It's what all people need. And Shalom Ministry is faithful to do this. John and Donna, uh, Roman, Nicole, others working with them have been sharing the gospel with Jewish people, walking through wide open doors that I promise you would never open for me. I hope you want to partner with them to do that. I hope you see the value of Jewish people hearing the gospel from non-Jewish people and people who have been well, well equipped. So I want to ask you right now, if you would... We're going to pray, and I'm going to ask you to seriously think about making a very generous donation to Shalom Ministry tonight. We had a really nice dinner. That was a really nice dinner. Uh, we had a, a lot of fun. And, uh, but I want to ask you, beyond the cost of your ticket, to, to seriously think about making tonight a very generous donation to this ministry. So will you join me in a word of prayer? Lord our God and God of our fathers, 
From ancient times, you made clear that you were going to welcome people from every tribe and language, people and nation, into your kingdom, to dine at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom. We believe that kingdom is coming soon. We thank you, Lord God, that we who have come to know your son, Yeshua, are now part of that kingdom, a citizenry prepared in advance of the coming king. Lord our God, may, our, may the driveways of our lives be free of debris. May the condition of our lives be free of unfinished business. May we do the things we need to do to be prepared to meet with you, for you are coming soon. I pray, Lord God, that, that we might get behind what John and Donna are doing and what Shalom Ministry is doing. Support this ministry in a big way. But Lord God, it all is depending upon your leading, your guiding, and your empowering through your Holy Spirit. So I'm praying, Lord God, not only that you will put it upon our hearts to give, but that you will raise up people to come alongside and to pray and to give and to participate to the end that the gospel goes forward. That more and more people, Jew and Gentile, come to know your son Yeshua. In his name we pray. Amen. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and it continues. On your tables are envelopes with what approximates my image and my likeness. Actually, yeah, I, I want to commend uh, my brother Ken Walker for really doing a bang-up job on this. It really is funny. But that's not the point. Inside this envelope, there are uh, forms for you, uh, envelopes, and, uh, and each envelope has a card with it with an opportunity for you to jot down your name and address, uh, and also to indicate if you are willing to make a donation tonight to uh, Shalom Ministry. And uh, I know that it would be very much appreciated. Of course, it's, it's tax deductible. So if you wouldn't mind, before we all leave, just take a little time, fill that out, pray, ask God what you want me to give, and then just be obedient to give that. And then uh, put it back in the envelope, put the envelopes back in the envelope, and you can leave that at your table. And uh, let me just say again, thank you in advance uh, for supporting Shalom Ministry. I, I believe in this with all my heart. And uh, you will be partnering in a ministry that is, as I said, unmatched, um, unduplicated anywhere in the world today. So I just want to thank you in advance. Take some time and do that. All right. Lord, thank you for the time together tonight. Thank you for friends and family. Thank you for laughter. And Lord God, we believe that we haven't begun to experience the joy and the laughter that awaits us when we walk through those gates, when we behold you face to face. And Lord God, we'll laugh at ourselves something fierce, but oh, to be in your presence. So thank you for just a little foretaste of heaven the fellowship, the feasting, the laughing, and the joy of knowing you. Please be with each one of us this evening and go with us and protect us as we drive. We pray in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Amen.